Hi, it's Lynn here from Coralina Boutique Crafts, KB Crafts, KB Patterns. Today we are going to be filming the Miss Chic wallet from Sophisticated Craft Designs. This is one that I've already made. It's twist lock and we have a slip pocket there, slip pocket there, zipper pocket, card slots on the front of that one. And behind the flap is another zip pocket. So plenty of wallet pockets and everything in it. We're going to add a wristlet strap onto the one that we are making. So that's what we're going to be doing. I've got everything set up ready to use um i've got a tray here with my um, components on it of my um, zippers my hardware everything that's going to go onto the wallet and as well as that we've also got uh pattern pieces all cut out and labeled ready to go so put get your pieces ready and join me back here and we're going to make a start on the um card slots all right our card slot is a piece that you have to cut um, by measurement there is no pattern piece for it then according to your pattern on page eight you are given the measurement at which to mark intervals down the side I've um, done one side and I've nearly finished the other side I'm just going to make the last couple of marks my next one is going to be two and three eighths then one and three quarters normally I do up a template for myself out of card that I then go to the ironing board and press my card slots but this particular one I'm doing out of waterproof canvas so I can't do that at the iron so everything has to be marked and done by hand all right so now what we do is we use these and make our folds the first one at the bottom is um wrong sides together so what i'm going to do i've got the right side up the wrong side is silver i'm going to pinch at those two marks and line it up evenly with the sides and then finger press along that because using waterproof canvas we can actually finger press it and it will stay in place then the next one is up here um, one and three quarters away and that is wrong sides together so that is the two silver sides together so pinch at that mark sorry right sides together so I've got to go that way which is a little bit awkward this time because I haven't got the mark on the wrong side. So I'm going to actually put my fingernail into that part and I'm going to fold it over like that. Then that will line across and I will again crease it with my fingernail. Then the next one is wrong sides together again. So you alternate wrong side, right side, wrong side, right side until you've finished folding your card slots. So do that and come back and meet me here. Okay, once you've done your card slots, put uh, clips on each side and hold those pleats together. This is what you have. One, two, three card slots. Put that aside for now and get your piece G, which is your zipper and slip pocket piece. We are going to make some markings on this piece as well. What we're doing at the moment is just getting things ready to be able to sew. All right, on this one, we are going to measure one inch from the top. Now this ruler is a one inch ruler, so I'm just going to line that up with the top. And we are going to make a mark we are then going to draw a rectangle 
from that one inch mark measuring actually I'm going to make a couple of marks so that I can make sure this is level and the rectangle is going to be six and an eighth inch by nine sixteenths of an inch high so six and one eighth is basically three and a sixteenth from the middle so I'm going to have to find the middle of this hang on a moment so that's our middle so line that up and draw your line which is six and one eighth inch long to me that doesn't quite look I think I've come just a fraction too far there I'll just make a mark this pen will um, rub off I'll put a hairdryer to it anyway uh, then 9 sixteenths of an inch high so measure 9 sixteenths these are awkward measurements. Um, wish I had them. Hang on, did you have one? If you've got a measure a ruler in um, centimeters, that would be a lot easier to use meant for making this box because she gives the centimeter markings as well, and it's actually 1.4 high. All right, so that's 1.4. That's the center there. Now we can make our measurements across. So it was three and one sixteenth at the center. Six and one eighth. Yeah, six and one eighth. So that's our top and bottom of the box. Then we just um, draw a line at each end and then through the center of that so I'm just going to eyeball this because it's awkward measurements for me right so a line through the middle like that going to try and find it there we go all right turn that other light on might help all right so there's our box that I've drawn there with a line through the middle and we just need to make a V mark on each end Probably would have been easier if I had just used the pattern piece and cut the little box out and then traced it on. Okay, so that is our box marked, ready for the zipper with the V's on the, in the middle and the line in the middle and a line top and bottom. All right, once we've done that, we can put turn it over. Now what we're going to do is we that was the top. So from the top, we are going to mark three eighths of an inch. And draw a line. Then measure down I'm going to use the centimetres again. 11 centimetres. Come across the other side and mark the 11 centimetres so that we're straight. And we're going to draw a line across there.
then we're going to go down seven centimeters draw another line then that should be nine centimeters to the bottom which it is all right so that is our piece g marked up and put that aside and meet me back here ready for the next bit all right now we need that piece g that we've just marked up plus our piece h which is the inner pocket lining and our smaller zipper which is the inner zipper pocket zipper all right, I'm going to take the markings off, so uh, sorry, the labels off, so that I can work with them. We now need to place G just to the side for a moment. Just remember to turn my machine on, and I need my zipper foot. We are going to place piece H and our zipper both right sides up we are going to have the zipper pull to the right okay so line them up at the top and baste the top edges Basting is a one eighth inch seam. All right, so what you have now is the zipper right side up against the right side of piece H. Now you are going to bring the other piece of H right side up to the wrong side of your zipper. So they're both still right sides up. And you are going to baste that edge of your zipper. So this is our pocket lining. If you can't manoeuvre it, just um, use some clips to hold it in place. Okay, so now what you have is a tube basically with your zipper on the top. Now what you're going to do is get your piece G. Do not do the side seams of this pocket piece. That needs to stay as a tube at the moment. Now we're going to use a quick unpick and we are going to slit those V's almost into the corner but not right on the corner and only to the center fold. Now as I keep showing in my other videos I always bring my quick unpick up at the center there so that you can see it comes out at that center point. That way you can only go that far and the thing comes away freely. You, that way you can't accidentally slip and go too far. So again, in at the corner. Again, bring the point out at the end of that V at the center line. And again, as we slip, we can only go that far do that to the other end as well so you're doing that to both v's now 
So we have both these now that they are free from the centers. You see my thumbs poking through. Now what you're going to do is cut that center line and I find that's easier if we use our scissors. So down at the one V, cut on the center line. come up with the point of the scissors where we've made that V cut and again we can't cut too far. All right using your fingers finger press this box down in place. I'm going to do that and I'll come back and show you we're all done. Okay I've turned it over so that you can see what I've done. I have folded the top and bottom from the center up and to the back and the little V's to the back. So that's what you have on the back. It is all finger pressed back and nice and neat and even on the front. Next, we are going to We can use double-sided tape and press this down if we wish, or we can just work with it depending on what you're comfortable with. I find my double-sided tape and waterproof canvas, although this one's the finer one, it might work. Just let's try. So I'm using the heavier waterproof canvas, it won't stick. So I'm laying this right against that crease that we formed where we folded it back. Okay, so I fold it, put it right against the crease. As you can see, I've still got fabric there at like above it. Peel that paper off and fold that where you've creased it back against the double-sided tape. And this one I think is going to hold, which is good. Okay, so do that on all four sides, your two little V's as well as the other long line. Do that and we'll come back and do the next stage. All right, once you've done that and got it down, then you can um, put another strip of double-sided tape on both of those. If you look very, very carefully at that, you can see just the faintest edge of the color above the double-sided tape. That means the tape's not going to show through to our other side. Then what we're going to do is peel that off on the bottom side of the box. Very carefully fold that back so it doesn't stick onto anything. And we are going to lay this down with the zip. Quickly finger press that seam flat. I actually like working with this thinner waterproof canvas for this sort of thing than the thicker one, but the thicker one is actually a more sturdy canvas for certain jobs. All right, so lay your pocket flat like that. Then we are going to line up this edge of the box along the bottom of the zip so that the zipper teeth are basically central in that box and press it down onto the tape when you're happy with the position of it go ahead and take your other piece of tape off backing off and lay that down along the other edge of the tape Okay, so that's what we have now at the front. 
sitting nicely inside the box and at the back we have our pocket but still as a loop go ahead and stitch just the bottom seam along there just along that bottom seam and stop one stitch either side of the opening i'm going to do that on my industrial and i will come back one thing i forgot to mention make sure that when you're doing that your pocket is actually up out of the way and you're only stitching through the zipper tape and that seam that you uh, basted that the top of your pocket is actually up like this out of the way all right on the front this is what you will have is that seam stitched just either side i've left the loop the ends of the cotton on so you can see where they are i will pull them through to the wrong side and tie them off in a moment so that is what you'll do with that your pocket was up in the right in that position and you can see you've only sewn through that bottom edge of the pocket all right do that and i'll be back next what i've done after i tied off those threads is i put my fingers in through the opening and pressed finger pressed that seam that we've just done down towards the bottom of the piece gently and then i've got this piece and press that finger press nicely and push the pocket down in that position so that it's nice and smooth push it over just to make sure now what we're going to do is pick up where we stopped at that one stitch over and we're going to stitch up across the top of the box and back down and finish at that one stitch over so go ahead and do that and come back all right you can see now that on the outside that box is closed with our stitching and what we've just done is that there we are now going to close up these side seams something just went down there what was it i'll find it shortly all right now flip this part back away from your pocket so fold your top part back on itself i've still got the zipper foot on so i can get closer to what i'm doing now i start at the top of the zip because that's where the top of our pocket is I'm going to just back stitch to secure, stitch across the teeth of our zip. Now be careful, some zips will cause it to break, some won't, depends what needle you're using. But I generally go a little bit slower over the teeth. Being nylon teeth, it shouldn't break your needle, but occasionally it will. So I've broken so many from going too fast that I've learned to go slow. Then we continue that seam down to the end of the fold and back stitch. So there's what you have, the top folded back and we've stitched down to the edge. And on the back when we fold it back we have this pocket ended. And do that to the other side as well. This time I need to come from the bottom. Stopping and starting to secure a seam. Slowly over my teeth to the top of the zip and just reverse a little bit and stop. And that's the second side of our pocket stitched. As you can see from the other side, it's all stitched up. All right, so that's our pocket zipped open. You can put your hand inside and closed up. That is what we have. All right, turn piece G to the wrong, to the back. Uh, we're going to place this one the wrong side up. Uh, wrong sides together fold on that line again i'm going to do it like that so i can see what i'm doing so we're folding up on that one if 
finger press along it. And this one goes right side together on that line. Which is easier to see. So that now gives us a little slip pocket in front of this um, zippered pocket which if you look at the one that I have made, there is the little slip pocket that we've just formed underneath the zippered pocket. All right, clip that and check your measurement. It should be five and a half inches tall. Spot on very happy with that all right i'll be back in a moment all right what i forgot to tell you before before we put the clips on was that we needed to top stitch that first fold that we put wrong sides together so the top of our slip pocket so that one that sits there has been top stitched if you have a um, logo label like a cloth label this now can get stitched in this right hand side seam. We're going to baste these side seams together and catch that label in place as we do it. Change my feet. Uh, where is it? Oh, can't find it. I'll look for it in a moment and I'll put this one back on. Okay, so basting these side seams at the top of the pocket down to the bottom of the fold and catching your label in place as you go. That's if you have one. If you don't have one, then just baste the seam, don't worry. Alright, so that's what it will look like once you've done it. You just basted it in place and just down from the top of the pocket so that it's not in the way. And baste the other side seam. Then we put this aside and we will move on and work with our card slots. So that's both side seams basted and from the back you can see just the narrow seam down each side. Okay, on with our card slots. We folded them before. We have them already done. We'll need to work with the tops of those in a minute. I'm just going to show you in the finished purse where the card slots are that we're working on now. Okay, so that is with my label. I had that was my old label on this one sewn in there. And the card slots are right opposite these other card slots here. All right, card slots. We marked them before and did our folds. If you've got a fabric that you can press, you press it with the iron. If not, finger press it like I did. And at each of these folds, we are going to top stitch one eighth of an inch from the top of the fold on all three folds. Do that and meet me back here. All right, once you've done your top stitching like that on the top of each fold, go along and check that these folds are even and not one skew with or something make sure they are evenly spaced if one is out just minusculely adjust it up or down and when you finished your measurement should be like the other one five and a half inches which this one is it wasn't when i first did it i had to adjust okay so that is that one when you've got that done turn it over and mask 
the back of these place some tape on it and I haven't got my tape in here I'll be back all right well I just had to go get my painters tape or masking tape whatever you've got handy um, on the back we are going to place it across the folds to hold them in place so they don't move and again on that side so it doesn't move turn it over and make sure that the fronts don't move on you either so you're going to place tape across the fronts again on that side across the front now this tape is only temporary so you want to use something that you can remove quite easily but it's not going to move on you while you work. Now what you're going to do is find the middle of this. So at eight and a quarter. So I measure it four and one eighth. And four and one eighth. And I join those two marks up. draw a line up the middle uh yes we will be sewing it no we don't we're only going to sew to the top of the slots so what i normally do is i will do a double row to make sure that that works uh, that holds quite firmly so i'm going to do one on this machine so that you can see what i'm doing Then when I go to the industrial, I'll sew one either side of it and stitch across at the top. Okay, so this I'm going to stitch down that line that I've just drawn. That is why we put the tape on both sides to hold the pockets and stop them from moving. Now I've stopped right there at the top of the slots. I don't know if you can see it clearly or not, but that is what I have stitched from there to the bottom of the line that I've just drawn. Now what I'm going to do is go to the industrial and sew the lines in the top stitching thread and I'll come back and show you. Okay, this is what we have now that I've done that. So I've stitched from the bottom up to the top of that fold one stitch across and stitch back down the other side as you can see on the back I was just either side of that row of stitching I did on the machine now what we're going to do is from the back of our card slots we are going to run a basting stitch down the side one eighth of an inch in that's it down the side and do the same on the other side be careful that it doesn't fold up on you because you're working from the opposite direction this time Make sure that on the right side it hasn't moved and on the left that it hasn't folded up on you. Now what you do is take your tape off. Get your card or a business card or something and check that you are right with your placement and that your cards will slide in.
and it is and you'll see that you've got just enough room to do a narrow seam when we come to it when we put the next bit on there okay meet me back here shortly okay what we need now is the rest of our inside pieces we need our side gussets which which there are four pieces we need our main lining which is piece d we need our side panels which there are two of we need our card slot panel lining and of course the two pocket pieces that we've already con um, constructed yes first up we're going to be joining our pieces f and g which are the two pocket pieces so put everything else aside for a moment where you can get at them easily we are going to place these with the bottom of each one together face right sides together and we are going to sew a 3 8 inch seam across the bottom that's my blue tape on my on sewing machine so that's what i'm going to be sewing so join those pieces together both the bottom of both pocket pieces that now gives us a card slot panel you finger press that flat Then we are going to get, I'm just going to move that zipper to the middle so that it pulls out of the way. Then we get our card slot panel lining, which is piece E. And we are going to place them right sides together. And we're going to sew the two short sides together. So that's the top of each pocket. So the top of the pocket piece there, and that is with a 3 8 inch seam. and the bottom which is the top of the card slot piece so again the short sides together again i've still got my zipper foot on i forgot to change feet so i'll do that shortly So that's, and we're going to snip the four corners of what we've just sewn. So we're just going to trim across, not on the stitching, but just above it and across so that we've got that happening. Do that to all four corners. Just reduces some of the bulk when we turn it. out of the way turn the, just turn the page so I can see what we're doing okay so now what we need to do is if you can press your fabric you will you'll turn this inside out or right side out actually turn it through And if you can use an iron on your fabric, do so and flatten these seams. I'll just flatten them with my fingers on those seam lines that we've just sewn. So those three eight inch seams that we've just done, flatten that seam line. And at the top of the pocket piece, we do the same thing. Now, 
Now what you need is your two side pieces. Those are those two long narrow strips that you cut. We are going to place right side to right side on each of the two long sides. And again, we are going to be using a quarter inch seam this time. Okay, it should have about three eighths of an inch overhang on each end, which it does. Okay, I'm going to get my quarter inch foot because it makes it a bit easier. having a quick look while I'm here see if I can find that other foot it's disappeared on me all right so quarter inch foot on now as I said three eighths of an inch overhang at the top and bottom and a quarter inch seam step somehow yes I have I will be back in a, mo uh, a moment when I have taken off this little piece I have forgotten to um, top stitch across where we flattened the two long seams I will do that and come back and then we'll sew these long strips on all right what I forgot to do was the top stitching along the top here and the same on the other end along the top there after we had turned it now we are going to sew these side pieces on I will try this again so quarter inch seam it overhangs top and bottom by about three eighths of an inch and we sew with a quarter inch seam so again I'm using my quarter inch foot so that it's easy to follow now if you can't keep those side seams from moving um, do what I did I've actually basted those two seams together just to hold them in place the basting seam gets hidden by this seam anyway not seen but it just helps to hold everything together and stops it from moving and on the other side Remember when we put the cloth label on that we basted that onto the edge? This now gets sewn in properly with this seam. And when you push that back, that cloth label, the basted seam, is no longer visible. So press those back. both of those back now we get piece D which is our main lining piece right side up and we lay this on that piece D right side up this is why we needed to overhang by about three eighths of an inch on each side So that's our card slot panel. Place it on top, both facing up. All right, I'll be back in a moment. 
All right, what we needed to do before that was to um, mark three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch top and bottom of this lining piece. I've just made little marks on the side so that I know where to line up. Then we take this piece, with the pieces folded out, and we align our pocket edges on those three quarter inch lines. Clip those edges. And then this ed end also will align on that three quarter inch mark. And clip these edges in place. Do that to the other side as well. Pull them out and clip in place. And then get our masking tape and we are going to secure this card slot edge, top and the zipper pocket edge on the other end here. We're going to secure that in place with some tape as well just to keep it from moving too much on us keeps it nice and secure now what we are going to do is level with the bottom of the card slots here we are going to stitch down the edge across the bottom oh hang on we need to tuck up those three quarter inch marks I'm not going real well today am I all right so on all four corners fold under both three eighths of an inch where we've got that overhang And then clip it in place do that to all four overhangs and they should line up with that three quarter inch mark that we placed on the lining piece before Okay, so starting from the arrow, we are going to stitch down the sides along the overhang piece, back up one eighth of an inch on that piece that we've put, that lining piece that we've put on, back across the top to secure it. And that is it. We're going to still have a bit of an opening on each end, just where the arrow shows you on your pattern. So do that and come back. I've had a look through the pattern and I can't see where there is a reason for leaving a gap here at the top. So looking at the pictures, it is actually sewn all the way around. So in a rectangle, that's what I have done. Started at one end, gone across, down to the other end, across and back down to where we started. If you need to, do it on your outer edge first, across and back down. It depends on the foot on your machine as to which direction you take. All right, do that to the other side and come back. All right, all we've got left to do now, if you haven't done it before, 
uh, I forgot to mention it, is top stitch either side of this center seam that we did. That will catch it to the um, lining piece as well. And then draw two lines, three eighths of an inch from that center seam. And we're going to top stitch them as well. So you will have this two one eighth inch seams here from the center and then a 3 8 inch line from the center. I will do that and come back and show you. All right, once you've done those top stitching rows, this is what you will have in the center. Of course, I've got variegated thread on it. It's a bit harder for you to see, but there are four rows of stitching, two in the center and two outer rows. Now you can take your masking tape off there and put this piece aside for the moment and collect your four gusset pieces. Your gusset pieces are going to go in the sides like that to hold your purse and when it closes they will fold in on themselves. All right, right sides together. And you're going to sew on the short ends. So folding that right sides together. And you are going to stitch top and bottom of all four pieces. And that is with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I found my foot before, so I'm back to the one I should have on for the 3 8 seams. and now we sew the bottom one that is one and go ahead and do that to all four pieces and I'll meet you back here all right, what you do now that you've sewn all four pieces is that you need pinking shears and trim that seam allowance back on itself like that. I find sometimes the pinking shears don't work as well. They're working well on this fabric, but on some fabrics it doesn't. I also have a rotary cutter with a pinking blade on and you can use a small cutter here and mat at your um, machine and you can actually roll that across and it does exactly the same thing. Go ahead and trim all of those four off and meet me back here. All right, once you've pinned those uh, seams on all four pieces, turn them right side out. Make sure you poke that corner out nicely with a corner poker or a chopstick or whatever you use. Make sure you get a nice turned out corner and finger press them or iron them down. Then go to your machine and top stitch top and bottom. Do that to all four pieces and meet me back here. All right, what we're going to do now is put our gussets onto our line our card slot piece we are going to align the top edge with the top edge of your pocket or your card slot piece and keep that raw edge level with the edge that you've already top stitched that little lining piece onto like that Keep it aligned. Then do the same with the other piece on there. Line it up to the top side. You will find they basically line up roughly where those center stitching pieces are that you did earlier. Then when you've got all four 
pinned in place you are then going to go to your machine and you are going to actually stitch and baste that in place with a 1 8 inch seam it basically is the top stitching row that you did on the outer edge you'll be stitching back across that same seam sewing these in place and I just continue on to the next one I don't break off and start again because it's going to get sewn in anyway so you're not going to see it and finish off then just give it a good press get rid of any um, marking pen that you've used the head erasable pen whatever any chalk and put it aside so this is what we have when we have finished and we're going to now put that aside so we have two one side and two the other and that will go aside meet me back here with the outer pieces okay what we're going to be doing is our flap and our outer body piece and our back external zipper pocket and I've got everything here on my tray I'm also going to be showing you how to do your d-ring tab and your little wristlet strap so I've got everything sitting on my tray here that I need for this the wristlet strap and the d-ring tab we can put them aside for the time being we have our swivel and d-ring they go with those pieces so put those aside you have your zipper tab that by two your zipper your pocket lining pieces you have your flap stabilizer I'm using heavy Decaville and our body stabilizer again heavy Decaville we have our two flat pieces, our outer and our lining, and we have our two outer body pieces. Now, if you don't have a um, one directional fabric like I do, you can use your measurements and cut that as one piece as I did in the um, vinyl. I don't have a bottom seam in the bottom of my purse, but if you've got a one way fabric for the outer, you will have a seam at that point. All right, we're going to be starting off with our flap. So put the rest of our stuff aside at the moment. And we are going to get our two flap pieces right sides together and sew the three sides, leaving the top edge open with, and we're going to use a one quarter inch seam. So I'm going to remove my labels. I'm going to change back to my quarter inch foot because I find it easier easier to keep an even quarter inch seam all right so right sides together now whether you're doing the rounded flap as I have done here on this one or the shaped flap as we're going to be doing now um, the method is the same so just do a quarter inch seam around those outer edges not doing the top straight edge so starting at the end of that straight edge and we're going to be going down the side so a quarter inch seam following your curves as you go As long as you don't go too fast you can follow those curves and get a nice even curve on your fabric now back out the other way till we get to that bottom curve now this one's going to be a little bit more tricky you have to take it slowly because we won't have the fabric left to guide us You might need to stop, do a stitch across 
or a couple. S swivel it back, do a stitch or two. Now we can pick up that curved edge. Up to the next curve. Follow that curve around. And stop when you get up at the other end of that straight edge. So we leave that straight edge open so that we've got something to turn and that is our outer edge sewn. Now again you are going to take your pinking shears and trim off the seam allowance to allow us to turn the fabric and press it. Um, because we're using pinking shears that allows the curves to go in or out as required on curves. Um, otherwise if you don't have pinking shears you're going to need to make snips around those curves but I found the pinking shears were working quite well so I'm not going to get the rotary one out and I'm just going to trim around those curves we trim for about half the width of the seam allowance I'm going to actually take it right up to the end, come back here and go right to the end and do it. All right, so that's what I have. I have used the pinky shears all the way around and back up to that end. So get rid of that that you've cut off. Turn your piece out the right way and Get those seams nice and neat. I finger press it as I go, roll it. Sometimes you've got to roll that edge to make it sit flat. Sometimes you've got a thicker and a thinner fabric as I have at the moment and that makes it a little bit more awkward. But I'm just finger rolling this seam, getting it to sit on the middle. Finger roll it and press it out nicely. If you're doing it at the iron, you'll finger roll it and press it with the iron. Should be able to get it all out nice and even. I'm just running my finger around the seam on the inside to help get it started. And then I'm going to come back and finger press and roll, finger press and roll all the way around that seam. See, I have a rounded point on the front. All right, do that all the way to the end of your seam. Now sit it down and get your shaped piece of stabilizer. I generally put the sticky iron on side to the lining. I'm going to put this in and work it all the way down into that seam. Keep it nice and level. All the way down so you have at least a quarter inch seam at the top. If you find you can't get it far enough down, make sure you're not going up on the seam, down under the seam, up on the seam, down under. Make sure that seam is sitting even all the way around. If you look inside here, you can see my seam is all sitting on top of that stabilizer piece. That allows me to get it down as far as possible. 
and if I fold that back you can see that I've got about a quarter of an inch free there that keeps this stabilizer out of the seam now I'm going to have to go to the iron and try very carefully to press this without melting it I've not tried pressing this fabric before I'm going to use a Teflon sheet to protect it and I will be back all right the reason why we do that before we top stitch is so that when we top stitch we can actually catch the edge of our stabilizer with that row of top stitching and by putting it to the lining of the flap it keeps that thinner fabric nice and firm and there is our outer piece that will come down over the front and it's the right way up with our thing and when you flip it up if it's a one-way direction make sure that it, the directions running the right way when you flip your flap up we have the as I said the seam allowance still available that's not caught with the Decaville and we have done the row of stitching all the way around the edge very carefully around the points and back up around the curve back up to the top once you've done that, put that aside and come back and meet me. All right, once you've got that done, if you are doing a magnetic snap insertion, you will need to follow what the pattern tells you to do because you will do that here now um, before we go any further. And that is why we put the um, stabilizer onto our lining piece because that way it stabilizes this fabric for the magnetic snap to go on. But I'm actually putting a twist lock on this, so that will go on later on in the um, installation, later on in the construction. So just like if you're doing the magnetic, you would do it now. If you're doing a turn lock, we will skip what I've just said and go on further. And we're going to go on with our D-ring and our strap. So collect your pieces and meet me back here. All right, next part that we're going to do is we're going to make our wristlet strap and our D-ring holder. Now, I've already done the one for this purse because I have to stitch it on the industrial. Um, I went ahead and did it so I could show you what it looks like finished. And the same with that, but I'm going to demonstrate using some scrap fabric for the D-ring holder and some of the waterproof fabric for the wrist strap. Now first off you will draw a line down the middle like that. You will do that to both pieces. Then fold in to meet that line so that your raw edges are in the middle. Then fold that on itself again so that the folded edges now meet each other and you've got a half inch strip like that I'm just going to stitch it on the machine so you can see just use a 1 8 inch seam on both edges Stitch the folded ends first, so the one where you've got the double fold. Stitch that part first, so that the next part just it holds it in place. You don't need to try and hold it as firmly. I mean, there's no reason you can't do the, the center fold first, but I just find it easier if you stitch those folded ends that have come up to meet each other first. Then you end up with a strip like that. I'm just going to, I'm not going to worry about the threads on this because I'm just going to reclaim the hardware. Then you slide your D-ring on down to the middle, fold it over. And that is what you have for your D-ring holder. Just put a clip on that and hold it until you put it into the seam in your purse. Then your wrist strap, again, line down the middle, fold each, ed each long edge in to meet at the middle and crease it. 
then fold them on themselves so those raw ends are inside down the middle there and you have that do not stitch yet put some clips on it because we haven't formed a loop yet we still have raw ends each end on the short end that is why we don't stitch just yet so we end up and we have that now with our wristlet strap still have those raw ends at the end get your swivel clasp And you're going to slide that onto that folded wrist strap like that down to that first i usually put it on there and then just hold it so that it's in between the clips can't go anywhere now we are going to come back and we're going to open up actually i'm going to move it down one more open up so that you've got your raw end do the same to the other end making sure you don't twist this wristlet strap you now have your short ends meeting each other like that come to your machine and do your seam allowance across those short ends Now you can refold that in on itself. Actually press that seam open. So I just finger press it open like that. And then fold them over on each other to the center. So that's what we have there where we've just stitched and joined it. Now we fold that in on itself again. Now you can add more clips to it, making sure that you have not twisted it. All right, and we have our swivel clip actually just folding loose around our strap there. Now what we're going to do is come to our machine, start at that folded, sorry, that join edge, where have I put it? right there under a clip okay so we're going to do that this folded edge first all right so we're going to stitch this edge first starting at that seam or just either side of it again we do a 1 8 inch seam along the whole length of the loop you can move your clips off when you come to them because this will now hold it in place I'm going to get rid of some of these clips off the machine bed all right so just keep moving it around as you get to the clips move them off All right, now we've come to the swivel clasp. What I do is I remove those clips. I now slide this along so it's out of the way of what I'm trying to stitch. Move that next clip and I can again move it along out of the way. going to trim off some ends here all 
All right, so there you have starting and stopping the loop at the seam that we had and our swivel will slide along the loop as we stitch we can just slide it along now we come along and we do the next side of the wrist strap again starting and stopping around the area of the stitched seam Just sliding it around as you need to so that the machine can stitch flat. Alright, now I'm just going to slide that swivel a bit further so that we get past where I started. off trim my threads now what I do is I can slide that swivel back near that seam but not right on it I fold it so that it's just to the back of the swivel so it's basically right at the base of the swivel then we're going to go to our rivet press and we are going to put a rivet in that if you want you can put your um, zipper foot on I'll show you that all right and get this as close as you can to the base of the swivel and stitch across Even if you've stitched across like that, I would still put the rivet on for added security, but I'll show you this in a moment. All right, so that's what we have with the line of stitching across at the base of the swivel. The swivel can't go anywhere because we've stitched it. And then we'll put the rivet in like I did on this one. I put the rivet just down from the base of the swivel as well. And it does not go through that seam that I joined. If you put it close enough, you can see where the seam is there, just above the rivet and below the swivel. So go ahead and do your wrist strap and your D ring tab and join me back here. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is put my name plaque on. Now, my name plaque goes on with rivets. So what I've got to do is work out where I'm going to place it. Um, with this fabric, I've decided to place it on the back because I've got a shaped front flap and I'm not sure it's going to fit nicely in the corner and still allow me to be able to stitch the seams. So what I've done, I've gone ahead and I've marked and punched the holes in this and I've got a piece of reinforcement heavy decaville that's going in as well. I've already put the front of the rivets through the holes of my plaque. I'm going to poke them through the hole in the fabric and the same on the other side. So both of those holes. I can turn that over now make sure that they are fully through a piece of uh, reinforcement they go on as well I'm not going to iron this piece of reinforcement on it's just going to sit there and help being reinforced it's not going to move and go anywhere because of the rivets now the back of the rivets go on Press them on. Now we're ready to go out to the rivet press and clamp these down. I'll go do that and I'll be back. And there we are, we have the name plaque on the back piece of the fabric. And that is down towards the bottom of the purse. Now we're going to get the other piece 
make sure that they are in opposing positions so that on this piece the fabric goes to the left and this piece the fabric points to the right. Now I'm going to fold them across and pin the two pieces together at the bottom seam. Sorry, clip. I only pin if I've got um, woven fabric and even then I tend to clip more than I pin these days. All right, see how I've left enough room so I can do a seam and not get in the way of that name tag, but yet it will be visible and down on the back and nice and neat and it's centrally placed. All right, this seam is going to be joined with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Oh no, that's after that's the, we sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance at this point sorry so i changed my feet again i found the proper foot yesterday if you notice clothes are different i'm filming across a couple of different days um due to appointments this week all right so we are going to do a 3 8 inch seam which is that blue mark the blue tape on my sewing machine so i know where the 3 8 inch is see how I've left enough room for myself I've still got about a finger width between the bottom of that um, reinforcement which is below where the name tag is so I've got plenty of room there for my seam and it's catching on to that over. Okay, so now you see the fabric is going in opposing directions. On this one, he is facing upwards and on this one, he's facing down. Open and press these seams, flatten them however you can. We also need to snip these corners. Alright, so I've snipped it across the corner to help cut down some of the bulk when we do the side seams. Now we press this seam open, finger press it, iron whatever you can with your fabric. I can't because this is a um, got a plastic coating on it and I can't find my um, finger press, press seam so I will go and do that and come back so once that is pressed flat like that we will do a 1 8 inch seam down that side and down that side of this seam I'll do that and I'll show you when I come back okay we now have that seam stitched and ed top stitched either side as you can see on that there if i show you the back you can see the two seams on holding that down all right I put that aside for a moment what we are going to work on next is our external zipper for our pocket we need our remaining zipper and we need the two zipper tabs We will place this face down on the top of the right side of the zip. I'll show you in a moment. And we stitch that across using a quarter inch seam. Sorry, a 3 8 inch seam. Thank you. 
So that's it, stitched across with a 3 8 inch seam right side to right side of the zipper. Now you're going to fold that back And we are going to fold that edge in. So we're folding that edge in like that. And we're going to flip that to the back of the zipper. Just marginally past. You can see it's just marginally past where the front one is. So that when we top stitch this front, we are going to catch that one that we've just folded. I'm just going to put a clip on that to hold it because I'll be stitching that over at the industrial machine. Okay, so we'll do that again on this one. Right side to right side. So right sides together. Uh, there's the right side of the zip. And the right side of the fabric is facing it. 3 8 inch seam. And again, we fold that back fold this piece down to meet almost to the zipper like that and then fold that over the back of the zipper so that again that fold is just past the front of the fold on the end of the zipper. I'll show you when I put a clip on it. Alright, so they're like that. I'm just going to grab an old piece of zipper tape. Got one here I can use. I'm going to use a old piece of fabric. There was a piece here just before. I know. That's where it is. All right. So we are going to probably be a little bit wider than the zip, but I just want to be able to show you how it works. All right. So that's our zipper tab. Right side to right side. 3 8 inch seam and that folds down towards the zip folds over past the seam on the back and we then top stitch close to this folded edge and there we have our zipper tab put on and we have caught the back of it where we folded it over so that's what you're going to do with this one go ahead and do that and meet me back because I will do this on the industrial all right this is the zipper now fully top stitched on the industrial so that match the top stitching on the rest of the purse okay we now have these components we have our card slot lining panel we have our outer exterior panel we have our flap we have our outer pocket lining pieces and we have our zip and we have our little d-ring tab now we are going to work firstly with the flap and the lining piece. This is where it all gets put together. We need to work with the um, card slot end 
and we are going to place this with the right sides up so both of them are right side up and centrally located all right i'm just going to make sure that is centrally located by folding that I'm just doing a little mark in the seam allowance area and just have a very tiny mark there in the middle right there where the pen is then I'm going to do the same with the card slot end of the lining piece fold it in half I'm not sure I understand Siri always interrupts these, I don't know why. And there we go. Center of the lining piece. It has a little mark on it, it's hard to see, but it is there. Now I'm going to line up those two center marks. I'm just going to flip that back so I can see where it is. All right, that's the center line them up and clip them I'm just going to use my ruler and double check and make sure right, I have just under three quarters of an inch and again just under three quarters of an inch so yes we are centrally placed all right based together using a 1 8 inch seam so it's close to the edges just basting it together So that is basted as you can see it's just a little narrow seam on the edge holding it all together next we need and I don't have the right page I'll be back all right next we need our zip and we are going to place that centrally make a little snip in it because I can't get the pen to work when you do little snips you have to make sure that you stay well within your seam allowance area and I'm going to do it the same to the other side of the zipper so I know where the center is so just tiny little snips that are within the seam allowance area we are going to place that right side down onto the right side of the um, flap and I'm just checking which way the little zipper pull has to go All right, zipper pull goes towards the upper side there. So if we flip that over, zipper pull going to the left and then centrally located. Making sure your zipper pull stays out of your way and I've lost the center mark of that again. I might do the same with this and put a tiny little snip. So matching up those snips so they're the centers you can mark it with pens you can mark it with pins you can 
little snips in it like I've done. It, whatever works for you, do it so that you can keep those centers aligned. Basically, this zip and the zipper tabs are just slightly outside each edge of the flap. Okay, now we do again another basting seam along that edge. Probably should have moved to my zipper foot for this, but I'm just going to lift the foot, move the zipper pull further out of the way of where I'm st stitching. That allows me to continue and it doesn't buckle the zip. So that gives us the zip at the back of the flap like we have the zip at the back of the flap in this. So there's our flap if I open it up. There's the zip that we've just basted the zip to the flap on that edge. Now we take one of our gusset pieces, uh, sorry, one of our pocket lining pieces and we place that face down on that edge that we've just sewn. That will go edge to edge of that lining piece. Now I'm going to change to my zipper foot. Okay, the zipper pull is very close to where I'm wanting to start stitching, so I'm going to pull it back out of the way for now. It's going to partially open that zip, but that won't matter. Now, match that edge to edge. And we are going to stitch this. Yeah, we stitch it all the way edge to edge using a quarter inch seam. Work out where your quarter inch is on your foot. I've just got to move it out from that tape a little bit so that I know it's the quarter inch. And because I have the bulk of the edge of the zipper I've got to keep moving the foot manually a little bit till I get it. There we go. Now it's moved. It was. Sometimes when you um, have different fabrics, upper and lower, it can cause a problem with the feeding. Um, times like this, I'd love to be able to use my walking foot, but unfortunately for zipper areas, the walking foot is too wide. All right, now we're getting there. All right, keep those edges aligned, quarter inch seam. Now I'm going to move that zipper pull back towards where it was. It's moved quite easily over at this end didn't like it on the other end. It's where the zip tab is. Uh, now we are going to open that out and top stitch piece C which is our pocket lining. 
So because that's the pocket that's only being top stitched, I'm just going to do it on this machine because it's on the inside. It won't matter if it's a different thread than what I'm doing the rest of my top stitching on. clearly states to make sure that you're only stitching through piece C, not the flap. So as you can see, I've only top stitched through the pocket piece. On the back, you can see a whole row of stitchings. We haven't gone through the tape. We've only stayed within that initial seam area and top stitched on the pocket. So everything is still nice and neat and tidy. All right, next we need interior panel B and C so I just got to work this out a moment and come back all right I was just getting a little bit confused there for a moment I've sorted that out what we need is our outer body piece and our d-ring tab so that we can base them together work out which side of your body piece the zip pull is coming to you want your d-ring on the side that the zip closes to so just carefully check that out before you do anything we are now just going to baste this d-ring tab to the edge of the body piece outer body piece So that is basted just on the edge. Not worried about those tails at the moment because they will be hidden inside. Now we take this body piece with the zip and the other pocket piece. We are going to baste the front piece of the uh, body. Sorry. No, the back piece. That's the one I put my label on. So that piece is going on to that zipper. I need to mark my center. Remember I did little snips before. I'm going to do that again. Just within the seam allowance. right side of the zip to the right side of the back of that body piece. Uh, where's my clips? I'm just going to clip these together. Okay, and we're going to baste that together. Just the back, uh, the outer back piece and the zipper right sides together and baste.
Right, when you get near your zipper pull, very carefully reach in underneath and move the zipper back out of the way. You're going to need your zipper partially open anyway, so it won't matter where it ends up in an open position. All right, so that is our back of the outer body piece basted onto the zip. Now we need our other pocket piece and that will go against the wrong side of the zip to enclose the zip where we've just basted. Clips in it to hold it in place. Now we are going to sew with a quarter inch seam and enclose that zip. Remove your clips as you get to them. When you get near that um, zipper pull again reach in underneath and move it out of the way some machines have a very narrow zipper foot if you have that you can quite often get away without having to move that zipper pull but most domestics the zipper foot is too wide to be able to get past and you've got to keep moving it back and forward I've tried to do as much as I can of this on the domestic so that you can see how it's done. It's just that I prefer to do my top stitching on my industrial. Okay, so again, we're going to do that top stitching on that pocket piece like we did before. Just through that seam allowance. our zipper open so that we'll be able to get through we are now going to bring the two pocket pieces together and just clip them Your side seams at this stage should meet up at the same point and you will flip your pocket, uh, sorry, your zipper tab into the lining of your pocket. All right, so if you can see, I've actually bent my zipper tab into the pocket. That allows me to bring those edges together and be nice and flat. And continue clipping down. Ooh. 
Now, if you've joined your outer pieces like I have, you will find that it will line up with where you've joined and done those, um, or not joined, but where you've sewn those seams on the lining piece. Where you did them at the bottom, they will line up with that center seam of the outer body. Continue clipping all the way back up. Across the bottom. Again, that centre seam has lined up at the bottom. We get back to where the other zipper tab is and poke that into the pocket. All right, so this is what you have on your outer body. You have that central seam cross there and you have your two pocket pieces up here. Zipper lining up at this point. On the lining side, you've got your interior lining piece with those stitching rows at the bottom lining up with the center seam of the outer body piece and all the way down and clipped again. I'm just going to go get a drink. My mouth's getting dry and I will be back to show you how to finish it. All right, we're back from that break. Now we are going to put everything together and sew it. We need to mark a seven inch opening here on the bottom of the pocket. So we will start sewing from one end of that opening we're supposed to do it with a okay we started a quarter of an inch and on the body and increase it to three eighths where are we no we start at um, a quarter and increase it to three eighths going down the side of the zip So a quarter going along the bottom. I usually back stitch there. Okay, now we increase this to three eighths of an inch going down the pocket. Now I've still got the zipper foot on because it gets very narrow here where we've got the zipper tabs. I'm going to manually advance this for a little bit because it is very narrow there. Then once we get past those zipper tabs, it gets a lot easier to stitch. And my zipper foot, for some reason, tends to catch on anything as it tries to come past. Now that I'm past it, we should be right. I'm just going to poke that seam allowance out to where it's supposed to be. And we are sticking on this fabric. 
This machine is a good machine, but every so often certain fabrics, it just does not like them. Right, now we've got it going. Continuing all the way down. Some of it tends to try and move to the side, just make sure it keeps staying out even. Otherwise you'll end up with little puckers and stuff that you don't want. That's what's going to happen there if I'm not careful. Over that, I'll move that there. Turn, come along the bottom. It really is not liking the plastic backing on this fabric. Don't get too many clips there, they're getting in the way. Now we turn and come back up the other side. This is where the walking foot comes in very handy, but I know I can't use the walking foot because I need the zipper foot up here at the zipper area. Now we are coming up to where we put the zipper pull on. Make sure your D-ring is poking inwards to the center of your fabric so that it doesn't get caught and make sure that you don't skip stitches coming across. If it does, then get yourself what they call a hump jumper. See how mine goes. No, mine's not skipping, so I don't need to get it out. But a hump jumper, if I can see where it is for a moment. I think I put it in this drawer. Yes, there it is. If you find you're skipping stitches, why it happens quite often is because the zipper or because the foot goes on an angle like my hand is doing. And what you do, you can use the zipper, sorry, the hump jumper at the front or behind to keep that foot level. You generally use it at the front as you approach the bulk and then at the back as you come over the bulk and come down again so that it doesn't go onto an angle and cause it to skip stitches. But that is a hump jump up. zipper tab area that's very tight now I'm past that we'll be right keep sewing down the side of the pocket the turn and we're only doing a quarter of an inch across the bottom here Stopping at our mark that we made. And 
back stitch so that it doesn't um, rip when you try and turn. Now, this is why we needed to keep our zipper open so we can get our hand inside. Actually, before I do that, we need to trim the corners. So again, trim the corners so there's not so much bulk. So we do that on the four outer corners. Now we can put our hand in and start turning. So we get this far corner. I poke it in with my fingers this way and then get it with my hand and pull. Then get this corner, poke it in with your fingers. So now you've got both corners there that you can grab hold of and start pulling it through and coming through the zipper opening through the bottom of the pocket and turning it right side out. Okay, and um, we get the, this and we poke it up and poke out that little seam. I've got a thread there that I didn't catch. Snip. And when we get to this side, same thing. Get your finger in and under that and poke it up so that that sits nicely like that. Pull your pocket body out for the time being because we now need to press this down as best as we can, nice and neat. If those corners haven't come out, get something to poke in. I use a chopstick. Go down to those corners and make sure they poke nicely, but be very careful that whatever you use, you don't go through your corner and your fabric and if you trim too close to that stitching when you trim your corners that can happen you can actually break the stitching and go through and then you've got to turn it all back in again and start the seam again all right so that's got the corners out nice and even both of them both of these ones are poked up nicely with the zipper tab and what we do is we now I still haven't found that seam presser. It must be in the boot of my car, and my car's not here at the moment. It's been taken for someone to use because he was too lazy to get his car out. All right. So press all those seams. Press them down nicely. Finger press if you have to, or go to the iron and press them. You've still got your four little gussets that we haven't done anything with yet. Don't worry about that, that is coming. Now what we need, once we've pressed that all down, is our other stabilizer piece. We need to fold it to get it in through the zip. And into the body. All right, so it pokes down. I'm going to move it across to there and then get my hand in and flip that fold out. You want it to be nice and flat. Get your hand on it and push and roll if you have to. Poke it nicely into the corners. Make sure it goes all the way into the body of your purse. If it's too big, take it out, trim it. This is going to actually fit nicely. Okay, now 
that now should be um, theoretically pressed in place but this fabric I don't think will go I that's right I did test it and it shrivels so I will not be pressing this with the iron to adhere I had enough trouble I had to be very very careful on the low heat to do it on the flap that was more important all right so this is in there so it's going to hold firm anyway now what we do now that we've got that in there uh, make sure you give it a nice good press if you can And next, we are going to top stitch. We are going to actually start just under the zipper area here, top stitch all the way down the side, along the bottom, and back up the side. The whole way you will be not, I won't be sewing on any of the red area, I'll be sewing on the blue. So that gives you an idea of how close you need to do your top stitching and where you are stitching. And I am not stitching through the zipper, I'm starting and stopping just below. So go ahead and do that and come back or if you want to wait till I've done it and have a look, do so. I'm about to go do that and I will come back. Okay, before you do that top stitching, I've got to tell you, you need to poke your gussets in towards the centre and then do your top stitching over the top of the gussets and through all line all um thicknesses of fabric so your your gusset your lining piece and your external piece all gets top stitched together in that row do that on both sides all right next what we're going to do is we're going to fold up our wallet helps if you just pin your sorry um clip your gussets to start with and just check where your slap is going to come over Right, so that's All right, so that's how this is going to sit with your gussets clipped in place on the outer edge. That's what it looks like pop a few things in there and just double check where you're going to position this flat piece when it comes down like that and just gently mark I'm going to find an area that I can make a mark knowing I can't put heat to this so I can't use any of my heat erasable Alright, um, right, so it's going to come down, on mine, it's going to come down roughly level with this blue flower. So that's what I'm going to use as my positioning. We can now put the outside of our twist lock in place. And before we close up our pocket, we are able to get our hands down inside making sure that you come that's why we've only clipped the gussets at the moment to see because you need to be able to get access by coming down inside our pocket and reaching down towards that flower where I'm going to be putting the piece through for my twist lock and I want it to go through the stabilizer um, I'm trying to find something I can't I have a pen that will mark on black but I, I need heat I'm just going to do an experiment and I'll come back okay I have a white clover marking pen this will actually mark on dark fabrics and 
Right, this is me marking it on the fabric. Now, if you use a hairdryer, it will take it off, but it takes a little bit of doing. I didn't completely do it, and the hairdryer doesn't shrivel this fabric. So that's what I'm going to use, is this pen for marking where everything is going. All right, so I bring this up. Now, as I said, this is going to come level with the bottom of that flower. Now that I have the positioning of the peak, I can work out where I'm going to place my I, my um, clasp this is the top piece and this is the piece that's going to come on here and I've got to push the two little prongs down through there and push them into place I am um, I'm going to get this over this takes a little bit of fiddling you just got to play around with it get it where it will work so I'm just going to fold that up at the moment bring this over till it matches that point there this is going to be roughly there across that white flower this I'm going to mark the center cut out with this pen uh, as you can see little oval has been marked on there that's the cutout area now from that I can gently position I'm going to actually use a couple of pins because I've got to poke things through anyway, so that is that side. That is that side. And that's going to be punched out so the pins aren't going to hurt that bit. Line that up with where that's going to go. I'm going to gently pull that back and I can see where those pins have gone into the fabric so I can make a couple of little short marks right beside now I can move it sorry about putting that in my mouth mumbling all right so I've marked a couple of little dots here where the prongs are going to go through this part so I'm going to get my quick unpick now the prongs need to come just slightly outside those dots now I've got to be very very careful doing this because I don't have a um, washer and I've gone the wrong side of the stabilizer. Here we go. Stabilizer's in place with the top stitching, so it doesn't matter if you go the wrong side. You've got to come back and go in the right side. All right, so I'm just going to do a couple of little Now what I like to do is bring it back up See, I've folded it over and I've brought my quick unpick back up and I will only cut that area there, like that. Now I go back in behind that stabilizer again to where I've got that other dot. Do the same thing, quick unpick in through
the outer layer and the stabilizer come back up and just cut that area now this will poke in through like that now I bend those feet so that they are out of the way now this gets fiddly because I need to make sure it stays firm now when I go out to the table what I'm going to do is I am going to um, get some tape and put over those feet inside that we've bent in on themselves so that the feet can't come undone and damage the pockets and lining in underneath here all right so we're almost finished i'm going to go fix up the rest of that and come back and i'll show you how we finish off all right there is my mcsheek with the um twist lock installed and are installed we have one option that we can do i not doing it because i don't have mylar and at the cost of it for the amount i use i wasn't purchasing any um, this has the heavy stabilizer in it it feels f quite firm so that's fine next we need to finish off these side gussets so we need to pull them out, fold up our wallet and clip these gussets in place. Do that on both sides, make sure you've matched the gussets evenly so that they're matching along across and back down again now this has to be sewn with a quarter inch seam so I'm going to remove my zipper foot finally and put my quarter inch foot back on There's a bobbin in there I didn't realize now it's gone everywhere I have a little um, leather container underneath my tray that's got all my feet and everything in it I forgot there was a couple of bobbins in there as well okay quarter inch foot is on let's line this up And we do a quarter inch seam all the way down. I'm going to back stitch top and bottom. Now through the pattern you'll find there are little um, hints like if you didn't want to top stitch you could use um, rivets at the top of each um, gusset. I may or may not add them I haven't decided yet I'll have a look at it when I finish I do have rivets that match my hardware and I may actually even go over that seam with the top stitching thread so that it matches the rest of the stitching but I wanted to show you how this was done Okay, so that is the gusset finished and that will then poke back in. You just poke the bottom in at the bottom there and position it where you want. And that is your gusset finished on that side. And when you open it up, it looks nice and neat and even. I think I might go and do the top stitching of those on the other machine. Then when you're satisfied that everything is finished, that you've done everything that has to be done, last step for you to do is to poke 
the quarter inch seam from the bottom of your pocket that you left open. I'm just poking the others out so that I can get a nice even start and end to this. Uh, because it's the waterproof canvas, I can actually finger press and get it nice and neat and it will stay where I want it. So poke in your seam, both sides. happy with that clip it in place so that it's nice and even make sure everything stays tucked down doesn't want to just get something and poke it that's why it's handy to push those corners out all right clip a bit further and clip so that you're keeping it nice and even it keeps that seam poked in for you Alright, now we come to where the start of that opening is and we just do a 1 8 inch top seam and close the bottom of this pocket. We just do a 1 8 inch seam because we've only got the quarter inch poked in so we can't go too wide on this. If you don't like a machine stitched finish to this, then if you've got fabric that you can hand stitch, go along and hem it by hand. Waterproof canvas is too hard to hem by hand, so I have to do the seam. Trim your threads. All you've got left to do now is poke it down inside, making sure you stay the correct side of that right, staying on the lining side of the um, stabilizer. Actually, no, that's not sitting right. It has to go on the outside of the stabilizer. You'll find where it fits best on yours anyway. And if you've had been able to um, fuse your stabilizer down, then it will make it a lot easier on where you're positioning this pocket. I'm just fiddling around, making sure it's nice and even and poke down so that there's no bulges. All right, so that's our outer pocket done. Close up. I'm just going to poke this in for a moment. There is your wallet done and lastly add on your wrist strap to your D-ring. There we go. We are done. 
when you've finished yours, make sure you post them up on Jassy's site on Sophisticated Craft Designs page and show your Ms. Sheiks.